Hi everyone, my name is Suleiman Qureshi and today I'm going to tell you 12 such things which are very important for each of us to know if we are using Power Tables. What are those? The first one is you can make these Power Tables in less than 20 seconds. Let me show you how you can do that. You have raw data, just select your data no matter how huge this is. Just go to insert and select from recommended pivot tables. You can find any suitable um, format for yourself. I found one, I got it sorted by states, and there you go. It's very simple, convenient, and fast to create your own pivot table in less than 20 seconds. Then you can get rid of the rows and the columns, totals. So by default, pivot table shows totals on both rows and columns, but you can easily disable one or both of these totals. If you don't want them, just remove them. On the pivot tables tab, you can go to the ribbon and just click on the totals button. Let me show you how you can do it. So for example, if I have this data sorted and uh, I have totals, you can see over here on my rows and columns. So I'll simply go to the table menu, private table menu, grand totals, and I can turn them off and on from here, subtotals on and off, for example, there you go. I've turned on all the subtotals from here. So this is very simple to remove subtotals, take only one grand total and get good visibility of your data. So similarly, you can remove the uh, totals as well. So there are no totals. It's only the information that is available you can play with. So that is simple and easy to make. The third one is you can count almost anything in the power table. So you might think that you have to be working with numbers to use a power table, but by default, a power table will count any text field. For example, uh, suppose you have a list of employees and want to get the count of the states. Let's see how you can do it. So I have a list of employees. I go for a pivot and over there I select the employees states. So I'll get the employees counted by states and if I take sex it's automatically count you can see so every text field is automatically counted in uh, your pivot tables then you can remove the data from pivot tables basically uh, whenever you create a pivot table from the data in the same worksheet uh, you can remove the data if you like and the pivot table will continue to function each pivot table has a pivot cache that contains an exact duplicate of the data used to create a power table assuming your data is in its own worksheet but it goes off on the first refresh so let's see how it works so for example if I have this table uh, it's private table pivoted from a data on a field sex and we can see male and female over here so in the data I went and I removed this column now it is still appearing over here it will continue to appear it will continue to appear in the cache unless I refresh it. So the moment I refresh it, it's gone. So it remains in the cache till the time you press the refresh button. You can group the pivot tables manually as well. Although pivot tables can automatically group data in many ways, you can also group items manually. Um, here's uh, one example where I show you uh, the department wise data. For example, we have the states information over here and I want to make this state as department and group them together. So for that reason, I'll have to select um, any of these um, that I want to group together and I'll simply click, right click and I'll group them. So the moment I press group, there's one group which is group one created for these. Now, if I want to create another group of these remaining items, I can move them, or the states, I can move them in another group by simply clicking on the gain and group. So we have two groups here, group one and group two set up ourselves um, for our own convenience. So you can group yourself manually the data that you have in the pivot. You can also group uh, the pivot table by numbers. One of the most powerful features of the pivot table is the ability to group data by numbers. You can use this feature to group by age, price range, or any numeric range that makes sense in your data. For example, let's assume you have a list of voting results that includes voter age, and you want to summarize the, the results by the group age, you can easily do it. Let me show you, for example, if I have this data with me and it contains age 
as well i will simply go to the pivot i'll select the pivot and i'll take over here uh, for example uh, for the purpose of counting i'll take h and i will put it in the rows and i can see from 19 till 90 sorry 16 till 90 i have all the ages plus the yearly earnings i have for all of the users so now i want to club them in a sensible category which makes logic and sense to us so i'll simply click again on the group and then it shows me the options of grouping like starting from the age of 16 till the age of 90 and grouping by the difference of 10 each so 16 plus 10 there you go and 26 plus 35 so 16 to 25 36 to 45 these are the categories that you can see over here um, that contain all the information over here for us so it's it's uh, grouping by numbers which is which is very uh, convenient let me show you another example of how you can do it conveniently for example if you have an information about invoices that you got repaid from your customers the invoice numbers the document dates document values and document currencies all of them are here so you simply have the date where your amounts are paid or credited and the currency of the document so you select the information go to the pivot table select the pivot table simply go to the document date because we'll group it by date and then uh, by document value so now simply go on to the document date click on group and then it's asking from the start till the last date that these are the ranges and i want to club them by month days whatever i want hours even so i will simply select by month and uh, I'll press OK. So you see, it shows me the month-wise data, but the problem with this data is that I don't have a yearly breakup. So when exactly which month um, of which year that is missing. So I'll again go to the grouping and in the grouping, I will select over here now, along with the months, uh, for example, years. So now it shows yearly. So in December, how much credits I did, how much cash I got, everything is categorized by the year. So that is how you can really summarize your data by numbers. Uh, and categorize it so this is number grouping so you can move it um, maybe on the other sides and you can see in the fab 15 in the july 15 and so on and so forth so you can move upon your convenience you can also move it um, as as per the quarters so rather than the months you can move it to quarters and for the year so you can see in 2015 in what, which quarter how much sale or how much cash did i get from my customers so this is um, somehow i'll say a manual number grouping that can be very useful then you can rename the fields yes normally when we go in excel for example here you can see some of the yearly earnings it's 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 an automatic or default name that is given by excel to it so you can double click on it go on to the custom name and you can change it to anything for example i change it to really underscore earning and there you go we have a change name over here so it's very simple you can change the name of um, such odd looking sum of count of and default names um, given by excel then you can also uh, add a field more than once in a pivot table. That's very interesting. Uh, for example, if you have a data and you want to see that we have yearly earning, but how many people are in this category? So we have this information, but we don't have the number of people. So I will simply put yearly earnings again. And rather than going for a sum of this, which is you see the same information, yearly earning, I will simply go and change it from sum to count now it will show me the number of people so how many people are in this category i'll check change it to number of employees i'll select okay so now we have yearly earning which age group has how many employees in that age group so this makes it simple to see how we can do it so i've i've entered twice this yearly earning once with the summation and the other one with the count of of those employees then you can automatically format um, the value field in your power table anytime you add a value field to power table make sure you set the number format on the field itself for example this pivot shows a breakdown of your earnings so i want to see it in numbers so i will simply click right click go to pivot options and in the value field setting you can go to the number format there you go in the number format in the number format you can set it up to for example, let's make it currency. In the currency, you can choose um, any symbol that you like. For example, let's see where we can find the US dollars symbol. There are a lot of currencies over here, by the way. 
So you can just simply go in uh, the details of the symbols and you can find any currency of your choice. For example, I've cho chosen this. So you can see it has changed. I selected only the top heading and it has changed the column information. So that's how you can change the format of your fields. Then you can drill down to see the data behind the fields. That's also very interesting. Uh, for example, I have this information now with me and I want to see how, how many people are there in this in this particular category. For example, this one. And if I want to see, I have to double click on it. So the moment I'll double click on any one of these, I will simply go back like it will automatically show me all the information that is in this particular category or the group in a separate sheet. So I have a sp separate spreadsheet to see the information that I had in a category. It's always in a tabular format, so it's easy for further pivoting if you want to do on this. Then uh, formatting the empty cells. That is sometimes a dilemma that we have empty cells. If, if, if you have a pivot table that has a lot of uh, blank cells, you can control the character uh, that is displayed in each blank cell. By default, empty cells will display nothing at all. Uh, for that purpose, I will show you how you can control it. So for example, this table has a lot of empty You see cells and uh, we, we really need to control this. So for this reason, I will simply select I will go on to the field um, table options and here we go um, For empty cells show let's say for example dash hyphen I put a hyphen and I select ok. So every empty cell it looks better now rather than only the empty, but it's hyphen that there is no information or no numbers over here. So it's 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 a bit better format, I'll say, to show up. And last thing is the turning off auto fit uh, when necessary. So uh, by default, when you refresh a pivot table, the columns that contain data are adjusted automatically to best fit of the data. So normally this is a good thing, but it can drive you crazy if you have other things on the spreadsheet along uh, with the pivot table or if you have carefully adjusted the columns with manually and you don't want to, uh, to, to them to be changed automatically and uh, for this reason we can disable it let me show you how you can do it so for example we have a pivot table over here I've selected um, let's say one format any one of them um, so we have this data but I want to format it myself and I don't want it to be changed automatically so for that reason uh, I have to go to the pivot options and I have to disable this auto fit. So now if I go and I change the formatting, it will not change even if I change refresh or whatever do um, like for example refresh, it will not change the data format of, uh, of the representation that I have over here. So it makes it manual and simple. So that was it, but still it's not finished. I have some tips for you to minimize problems down the road. Always use good quality um, source data that I will recommend. Um, organize it in a tabular layout. That's perfect if, if you have a tabular layout of your data that makes it easy for you to go for the pivots. Perfect source data will have no blank rows or columns or um, no subtotals. Each column will have a unique name. One row should have only one name um, every field will have a value in every row and columns will not hold repeated groups of the data for example name names of the months or location names or region names and stuff like that so in addition to this i'll say tables are best data source for making pivots um, and easy convert and maintenance of the data so i'll suggest that whenever you go for a pivot better better make a pivot um, table before the pivot table and that 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 will make you easy to go through so that was it from my side folks um, i hope you enjoyed it looking forward to talk to you again thank you very much bye bye